Welcome back to Laser Engraving 911. So on our last video, we went over the ins and outs of the X-Tool S1, but what I didn't tell you was that X-Tool actually sent me the X-Tool screen printer, and that pairs really nicely with the S1, and that's exactly what we're gonna get into on this episode of Laser Engraving 911. So honestly, I didn't know much about screen printing until I got this system, and I'm pretty stoked with what we were able to accomplish, as you can see some of our samples here. We're gonna show you how the X-Tool screen printer works, we're gonna show you how to set up the files, and we're gonna show you how it works with the S1 by X-Tool. So if that sounds like something you wanna get into, then buckle up, get your pen and paper out, cause we're about to get into it on Laser Engraving 911. So just like the S1, the X-Tool screen printer came boxed nice and neat. And once we had all the parts laid out and followed the instructions, it was very easy to put together. Very basic concept and design, and it feels really sturdy too. So here's a couple of things I wanted to go over with you. First thing is, is there's a part in the box that's not covered in the manual. It's this guy, right here. Don't throw that away. It's a locking clamp to make sure that your screen is locked into the S1 in the right location. It's really important. Now, if you're using your own laser to burn the screens, then this thing really doesn't matter. Second, after you get all the parts together, you wanna to make sure that you put the screen and the frame the right way. And when you get it locked in, it should be tight and make a sound just like a drum, like this. Ooh. Okay, okay, now I'm having too much fun. And third, let's talk about these screens. The traditional method of making screens for screen printing involves developing the screen, making a mask, using chemicals to wash out the mask, and a whole bunch of other equipment. What Xtool has done is made a pre-coated screen using a laser safe kind of a polymer mask. And what you're essentially doing is lasering away the parts of the mask to reveal a very fine stainless steel mesh underneath that mask, which is the part that your paint will get pressed through and onto the substrate, like t-shirts, cards, journals, whatever. And the unlasered parts will be blocking any paint from passing through. Pretty snazzy. All right, now that we've got all that out of the way, let's move over to Adobe Illustrator and I'll give you a quick tutorial on how I prepared this graphic of Coco to get ready to be loaded into the XCS software and sent over to the S1 laser engraver. Okay, so I'm using Adobe Illustrator to create my design files for the X-Tool screen printer and the S1 laser engraver. What I've got on the screen here is a model of the frame of the X-Tool screen printer. And what it's showing is the metal parts of the frame. It's showing the actual screen size, which is 16 inches by 11 and a half that comes with the kit. And then in red, it's showing you the limited amount of print space that you have when using it with the S1 specifically, because it's not able to engrave the full 16 by 11 and a half. Now, if you have a larger CO2 laser, like I said, the X-Tool screen printer system does not need to be used with an X-Tool laser. That's just what we're doing in this tutorial. If you've got a Thunder laser, Epilogue, Boss laser, you can laser away these screens on any of those CO2 laser systems. And if you do have a bigger bed, you can use the full screen. And then also what I have is just like a mock-up t-shirt here, um, just to show how it kind of slides in this way. So you see where your collar will stop right here and that way you can judge where you wanna put your graphic. So I've got this graphic here of this Frenchie and I actually pulled it from this collection here. These are all nice vectors and I'll list a link in the description below on where you can download these. I thought this one looked the most like Coco, so that's the one I brought in here. You can highlight this right here and I hit Control G on the keyboard to group this. And then down here, this font that I picked is just brushed regular because this is still an actual editable font right now but i want to expand this into a vector so i'm going to highlight the word coco i'm going to go to expand object and you see it's still got these loop throughs here so to get rid of that i'm going to use the pathfinder tool if your pathfinder tool isn't already window isn't already up you can go to windows pathfinder and open it up there highlight it i'm going to hit the merge button and then I always go over to path, cleanup path. And then 
I kind of bring it into here to where and kind of size it just right to where it kind of looks like it's part of the graphic. And then I'm going to highlight all this right here together and I'm going to merge it all together. And then we have one merged path right there. First, I'm going to get my shirt in here and I'm going to put this graphic about where I want it to land right there. And one important thing to remember is that when you're making this file, you have to flip it because you're gonna be engraving on the back side of the frame. Now that I have the logo placed in the engravable area, right where, where I want it, where it's gonna land on the screen, I don't need this anymore. I can just grab this center box and cocoa and bring this out here because that's my true engravable area. But what you have to do is you have to flip. So we go to object, transform, reflect, and I'm gonna do a vertical reflect. You see how that's reflected there? And now I don't need any of this stuff anymore. I'm gonna unfill that and just keep that border right there. And then this is what I'm actually going to bring in to the XCS software because I can align it perfectly with the template in the XCS software that you'll see when we get to that part. And you see, we just line it right up and it's already spaced perfectly right where it needs to be. That's about it. So the last thing you wanna do, and you need to know this about the Xtool software, is that it only takes SVG files. So we're gonna to go to File, Export As, and we're gonna to go to SVG and then you just title it and export it as an SVG and save it to wherever you wanna save it so you can get it over to your Xtool machine and we are good to go. We're gonna go over back over to the S1 and we're gonna load this file in and I'll show you the whole process of how to get it loaded up into the XCS software and we'll go ahead and burn this screen. Okay, so we just finished making our graphic over in Adobe Illustrator. And now we are back with the XCS software and I'm gonna show you how to import the SVG we just created and then also set up the screen inside of the S1. So let's get into it. So over here at the XCS software, it's just gonna kinda, of, when you're working with the screen print frame, you wanna come over here on the right hand side first and select screen print and it's gonna show you where your frame is because it knows due to the fact that it comes with this little clamp, comes with this little alignment tool that you can put right here and you wanna make sure that you put your frame in upside down. And these two little notches right here are just gonna bump right into those two pins. Right there. And that way the XCS software knows that you just put in a screen and it's all registered properly. Once that's done, we're gonna come back over to the XCS software and we're going to focus to the screen by hitting the auto focus button right here. And the S1 just focused to the material. So we got that out of the way. We're going to import image we're gonna find our SVG that we created. It's gonna ask if you wanna scale it. I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna click no. I've got some elements on this that we were just working in Adobe Illustrator in. I don't need those anymore. I don't need this little graphic down here, so I'm gonna delete that and I don't need that. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice when you're importing SVGs is that sometimes they come ungrouped and they come as different components. And we don't want that. We want to unite everything before we engrave it so it doesn't engrave each part separately. We want it to engrave all continuously and go across the graphic. If you leave it ununited, it's gonna work on individual pieces all by itself, which takes even longer. So you're gonna highlight your SVG, all, all components of it. We're gonna go up to combine and unite. And this may, depending on your computer, this could take anywhere from a couple of minutes to five minutes to seconds. I think it really depends on what kind of computer you're using. So one way to check to see if it's done, oh, well, it just finished right there, you see? All the little different components that it had highlighted have now disappeared and it's completely united, all as one. I'm gonna rotate this 
because I know that's the orientation I want it on the screen and I just grab the rotate and hold down the shift so I get locked rotate. I'm gonna zoom out. Now I haven't figured out yet how to snap to this pretend line, which I can't actually, but I want this in the center of my frame, my, my uh, printing frame. So the only way that I could figure out how to do this is by drawing a box that's exactly the same size as this kind of invisible guideline that they gave me. And then selecting everything and going to align, horizontal alignment and align vertical alignment. So that snapped it right to the middle. And then I go ahead and get rid of that box that I just made because I don't want to engrave or cut that. And then I know that I want to bring it up to where it's only an inch and a half down from the top of my screen. So I draw myself a little inch and a half, change that to 1.50. And I'm just using this as a guide, put it at the top of the screen and then bring Coco up to where she's an inch and a half down from the top of the screen. So now that we've told it all this, we're going to select Coco and we're gonna to go to engrave and we fill all this. We can zoom in and make sure that everything filled properly, all the little details and stuff. And then we click off of Coco and we go back to materials. Here we have the material setting and it's saying, what are you gonna be engraving? And I'm gonna pick coated mesh 100 mesh. So. Once I've done that, if I click back on Coco, you can see that it changed the power to 40, the speed to 253, and 200 lines per centimeter setting, and it's gonna do one pass and it's on bi-directional. So it decided all that for me because I told it what material we we're about to be doing, and it also is already focused. So at this point, all you need to do is go over to process, click the process button, and it's gonna send it over to the laser. And since we went through that, why don't we go ahead and watch the S1 make this screen for us, then we'll go on to the next step. So we just finished cooking this screen on the S1. We went outside and we blew it off to get rid of any little dust that was left over after the engraving. It came out really, really nice using the setting that was provided on the S1. And now we're gonna dock it into the X-Tool screen printer. So the way you're gonna do that is you wanna make sure that the rim side is up. And you can see right here, there's just two little notches. You just push that in there and tighten these down and now it is completely locked in place ready for screen printing this is your uh, platen or whatever and it has some knobs right here which move the platen left and right and forward and back in case you're doing multi-color jobs and you need to make slight adjustments that's that's what these knobs are for right here and then over here I'll turn this for just a second. This knob right here is really important. So it's locked in place for doing t-shirts right now. When you unscrew this, it's spring loaded and it can raise or lower the frame, which is important if you've got like a box you're doing or something high that you want to screen print on, you need to be able to raise the frame. But for doing t-shirts, you want it about one, almost all the way at the bottom like just one eighth inch and tighten it down. And once you, you get it, that gap, that one eighth inch gap right there for t-shirts, then you wanna tighten this down. So when you close down on a t-shirt, you're just hovering above the shirt, but you're not touching the shirt. All right, so that is basically how simple this thing is. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to load up a shirt. So I just got these from, I don't know if it was Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but we just got some test shirts. And you wanna take your shirt, and it actually goes over the platen here. And I just use this center knob to kind of line up the center of my shirt. And I bring the edge of the, the V on this one 
right to the edge and make sure that I'm lined up here. And then I check this seam, the distance between the platen and this seam right here on this side and on this side. And I can see I need to move the shirt over just a little bit. So there's like the little seams of the shirt and I'm looking at the distance between the corner of the platen and the corner of the platen right here. And then I'm making sure that I'm centered here. And then I just smooth the shirt out, make sure that's where I want Coco to land. So now that we've got the shirt loaded up, we're gonna go ahead and get onto the actual paint application process. And for that, I'm gonna give it over to my assistant, Dana, who is much better at doing this, we found out by doing some test runs. She seems to have the magic touch when laying paint through the screen and I just suck at it. So I'm gonna let her take it over from here and I'm gonna talk through what she's doing, why she's doing it. All right, so first you definitely, no matter what kind of paint you're using, you definitely wanna be stirring the paint really well before you apply it to the screen. This stuff is pretty glitter, shiny-tastic. I'm really curious myself to see how it's gonna look. The squeegee there has a little magnet that holds it on the end there, so you can not lay it down while you're working on it. And what Dana's doing now is she's putting just enough ink at the top of the graphic there that she thinks that she's gonna need to flood our little Frenchy Coco with enough ink. Boy, that gold looks watery, doesn't it? Compared like it to the other more, stuff? Yeah. Yeah. This is also my third time doing this, so please don't judge my technique. No, nobody's gonna judge. We already said in the beginning, this is all new to us. So she's enough. just putting enough ink. Yeah. Yeah, the gold is definitely runnier than the primary colors I'm noticing. So right now she's gonna do what we call flooding the screen. She's not pressing down on the shirt yet. She's just gonna put ink into the, see how she flooded it there? That's all right. Yep, she's just gonna flood the screen. You see how the ink is all into the thing and then she's just gonna give it one hard pull all the way down. And then that's it. She's gonna use the magnet to set it back down and we're gonna see the magic. Dang, <laughs> nice that job. Really good. I, I told you, I told you she had the magic so touch. Okay. Wow, that looks really nice. And then she's just gonna pull it off of there. Not gonna let it fold in on itself. That is awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. Nice job, Dana. Thank you. You got the magic touch. I'm telling you, I'm gonna have to have you teach me how to do this. But anyway, that's the basics of how to use the X-Tool screen printer. I mean, it's gonna take you a couple times to get it this good right here. So make sure you get some like test sheets of paper. I think there's like little screen printing test pads you can get to get your technique down. Dana seems to be a natural at this. Nice job, Dana. Thank you very much. All right, good job. So next we're gonna try printing on some JDS leatherette and we're gonna see what how that substrate works. All right, here we go. Boom. Oh, dang. That is awesome. Holy crap. That looks so cool. Okay, so also in the X-Tool screen printer kit, it comes with this kind of sticky pad. It's real tacky on both sides. And they give you this as an option to place down on your platen right here. So if you've got something that doesn't like fit around like a t-shirt does where it kind of holds itself like this canvas bag that we're about to do, this sticky pad, you just stick it right on top of the wood platen, helps keep whatever item you're gonna be working on in place and doesn't shift. So I think we want Coco to land right there. Okay, so Coco's gonna land right there. We just put this on here and then that's what the sticky pad's for. And I'm once again, not gonna attempt to put the ink down because <laughs> I just mess it up every time and we're gonna pass it over to Dana and watch her put some black ink. Now the black ink that we got, I noticed that the kit didn't come with black, but we actually using the water-based speedball black for this canvas bag. So we're gonna stir this up, give it a go on this canvas bag. Ooh, it's thick. It is not like the gold. See, ha see the normal colors are thick like that. That gold was very thin. Give it a stir and then Dana's gonna take over. <laughs> right now, literally I'm grabbing right the camera. Now. <laughs> right now, me and ink don't get along. I think the gold was easier to Really? Because it was runnier. So she's just putting enough ink on the top of the graphic that she thinks she's gonna need to do her print. 
And like, once again, we both really don't know what we're doing, <laughs> but we've watched some videos on, on screen printing, so we have a general idea. We're experts because we watched the YouTube videos. Right, video. we watched YouTube videos. She's going to flood the screen. <laughs> See, all the ink goes into the screen. She just did it in one shot. Look at that, bam, amazing. And she just does one good pull. Damn! She's so, a little bit right there, but. Yeah, but that was, I mean, still, that was amazing. Cocoa bag. Should we do this one as a giveaway? Does anyone <laughs> want a cocoa bag? Yeah, leave a comment in the video if you want this cocoa bag. It's a one of a kind. We're not gonna make any more. So you can see a little bit of uneven pressure. That's one of the things you wanna look out for is make sure you have even pressure through the whole pull. But it still looks awesome. I mean, even with that, that's just amazing. Nice job, Dana. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna show you guys why Dana is doing the screen printing and not me. I, I, I'm gonna screw this up. I know I'm gonna do it. So I, I'm so confident that I'm gonna screw it up. I'm actually using the back of a t-shirt that we already messed up and not an actual t-shirt. All right, walk me through it, Dana, so. Okay, so you need to use this thingy. Uh-huh. And you need to take that Okay, so I need to put some of my ink back up here, yeah. right? Oh, see what I mean? Oh, okay. All right, need some more ink. See, I slapped that ink up there. I'm gonna put the, use the magnet, very handy. Yep. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. A little bit more? Mm-hmm. How about that? A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more over here. Now, what kind of pressure should I be so what I was doing, I was kind of lifting it up a little bit, uh -huh. and then it'll just like a light drag. A light drag. Just go all the way. Like that. In, yep, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So it should look pretty much fully flooded, right? Yeah. Full of ink. And then you'll put it down. Mm-hmm. And then you'll put you'll put it up there. Uh huh. Both hands. Two Both hands. hands. Push as hard as you can and pull. And pull all the way through. Yep. Hey, hey, there you go. Hey, I pulled it off. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. All right. Might be the best one. That might be the best one yet. <laughs> hey, I'm super stoked with that. Oh, hey, 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 Coco. Ah! Oh, that pad's sticky. Nope, nope, nope. No, don't do it. Hey, there look, Mom. Go. I'm a screen printer. <laughs> that looks really good. Yeah, that came out really good. Get in on that detail. I think you just needed more pressure. I needed more pressure and I needed more confidence. So that's something we can tell everybody watching. So don't be afraid to mess some stuff up with the X-Tool screen printer. You're definitely gonna mess some stuff up and have more confidence than I did. And I think with a little bit of practice and a couple of blown shirts, maybe some blown paper, you'll be getting prints like this in no time. That is nice. And Dana's prints too. Her gold print was tight. I like it. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> that was very good. Look at that. Look at that. So now that we've done the shirts, let's talk about the last step you have to do, which is you have to cure the ink. We're using water-based ink, as you saw in the video. So there are a couple ways that you can cure the ink. You can actually use a heat gun. You want your heat gun to be around 350 and you just wanna be hovering over it and you wanna keep it moving. You can use a flash dryer, which is pretty expensive. You can use a whole flash dryer conveyor belt system, which is even more expensive. Or you can use a shirt press or a heat press like this Vivor heat press which you've seen me talk about in my engraved leather patches video and I'll put a link to that right there if you want to watch that one so you can see how I use that when I'm making leather patches but for this purpose it's really great for t-shirts it's really great for curing the ink so all you've got to do is you're going to set to about 340 350 somewhere around there for 30 seconds you're going to use medium pressure so you can adjust that here by raising or lowering the top platen, which will adjust how much pressure is put on the shirt, right? And then what you wanna do is you wanna grab your print, and this is the one that I was very proud of, even though it's just a junker shirt on a mess up that we did, but I still wanna cure the ink. So all you have to do is swing this out of the way, lay the part that you wanna cure right there, put a piece of Teflon paper, and I'll list links below to all this stuff, including the heat press, the Teflon paper. Just kind of gently lay it over there. Swing your, your press down, and 
there you go. 30 seconds at 340, 350. We're literally curing the ink that's on the shirt right now and it's ready to ship at that point. And we'll cure everything else that we did here in a second. So you can watch me cure all the leatherette, the other shirts, the gold, and we'll just see how it all comes out. Three, two, one. You get a little beep, lift it up, tap it, stop the timer, swing it away, bam. Coco is cured. So that is now completely cured, ink completely dry, good to go. All right, let's try something else. Ooh, let's do blue cocoa. Nice and flat, no wrinkles. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you can also just air cure these. It takes 24 hours for water-based ink. You can just leave it out for 24 hours, but it's gotta be pretty warm and dry. So this is probably the best. From what my research has told me, this is the best way to do it for these small print runs. So here we go. Timer starts automatically. Yeah, so if you see some steam, don't sweat it. It's, it's all the moisture coming out of the shirt and probably a little bit out of the ink as well. Swing that away. Steamy. I think there's a lot of moisture in that shirt. I'm gonna actually hit this one more time, but this time what I'm gonna do, put the Teflon sheet there, I'm gonna actually add some more pressure. And I'm gonna do that by going clockwise to where it's really tight. And I'm just gonna hit it again. Oh yeah, that felt a lot better. More pressure more moisture coming out. Oh yeah, that feels better. Cured, ready to go. That shirt came out so good, even though that little spot, because we let the ink dry in the screen, got messed up, it still looks kind of like distressed, you know, like a cool print. I like it. You want to try to cure a piece of cardboard and see what happens? So this one, we did some multicolor streaks. We mixed some colors together and we just print it on cardboard. I mean, let's, let's see what happens just for fun. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Can you cure cardboard? Probably should just let, it. you think it's gonna burn? Yeah. No. All right, we're still nothing kept on fire yet. Eight, seven, six, <laughs> five. <laughs> I, smell, I, I smell burnt cardboard. No, I smell, I smell like wet cardboard. Okay, there's 30 seconds. See all that moisture come out of that cardboard? Look at that though. It didn't hurt the print at all. It actually just cured the ink. Mm. Nice. I think we're gonna cut a nice square with the laser out of that and make a nice print out of that. Yeah, that'd be cute. Yeah. All right, let's do the leatherette. Mm -hmm. Let's do the leatherette. Ooh, look at how sparkly that is. <laughs> Dang. All right, let's cure that on the leatherette. And this leatherette is from JDS. It's my favorite for making faux leather patches. I'll list, I'll list a link below. Just want to make sure that the heat element is not touching. All right, here we go. Bam. But it didn't hurt it and it didn't mess up the print and it's really hot. <laughs> I will tell you that it is hot, hot. I'm going to go on to the canvas bag. We're just blazing through these. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> this one's this one's awesome. Well, we're just like a we I feel like we're just like a production shop at this point. Now, I'm not I'm not going to lie. On this one, I feel like we could have went a little higher up towards the towards the V-neck right there. Yeah. But, you know, the print came out stellar. We can work on registration later. I feel like we're ready. We're ready to press. Put our cover sheet on. Boom. If that heat press touched the actual paint itself directly, I think that would be not good. Always want to make sure that you're using a cover sheet. You do not want that heat element to be directly on the ink or you're going to have a big mess on your hands. Nice. She's so shiny. Oh yeah, that feels real nice. Oh wow. <laughs> Do we have anything else or was that it? That was awesome. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Laser Engraving 911. 
I actually had a lot of fun using the Xtool screen printer. I didn't know anything about screen printing until I got this unit here. And the fact that I could make the screen with the S1 X tool or any of my CO2 laser engraving machines, which you totally can, was pretty amazing to me. I want to give a shout out to another YouTuber named Milo. He has a YouTube channel called Milo Prince, and I'll list a link to his YouTube channel below. I actually went to his channel to learn more about the screen printing process in general for printing on shirts, techniques on how to flood the screen. His YouTube channel was very helpful for me in understanding the traditional process of screen printing. So head on over to his channel if you have more questions about screen printing in general. He's got a lot of great videos, step-by-step -step guides, and you will find that a lot of his information is transferable to using with the Xtool screen printer. So I thought it was really cool that we were able to print on so many different substrates. You know, we were able to do t-shirts, we even tried some of the gold glitter paint that they sent with the system. And I think this, this is for my daughter. It came out great. We were able to actually print on some JDS leatherette. So maybe you could do a bunch of prints on a big sheet of JDS leatherette and use the light burn print and cut feature. So you could cut all your patches out and have colored patches. Not sure if that would work, but it's just an idea I came up with. Let's see what else we were able to do. The canvas bag of course, came out really nice. And you know what's great about the Xtool screen printer is that you don't have to use water-based inks if you don't want to. They do ship you some with the kit, but you can use Plastisol ink, you can use water-based ink. It's basically just a traditional screen like you would use in screen printing. So it's really up to you what kind of inks you want to use. Right now it's on pre-order for $250 for the basic kit and $450 for the multi-screen, you get like extra screens and lots of different colors. So I'll list a link down below if you wanna pick one of these up. It is an affiliate link, so if you do use that link, you're actually helping support my channel, and I greatly appreciate it. And then finally, I just wanna say thank you to all my subscribers. I really appreciate your support. Take some time and leave a comment below on what you would use the Xtool screen printer for in your shop. I'd love to hear what kind of projects that come to mind when you watch this video. So until next time, we'll see you around on Laser Engraving 911.